Remember what I said about the water gun and teleporter TMs and such being really stupid? Well, here's a soft-boiled TM. Now, while it's a very good move, unlike the aforementioned two, there's only one problem. Only one Pokemon in this generation it is able to learn it, and the guy even says, says it himself. And of course, it's only Chansey, so why? Oh, why did they not just put the move in its natural move pool instead of making a TM for it? That's really stupid, and in the next generation they understood that and they gave soft boil to, to the Chansey line naturally instead of, you know, this. Okay, now I'm gonna store whatever items I obtained in the last few videos, aside from, of course, the Payday TM and uh, the Nugget, which I'm going to sell. I wonder how the, the Payday TM is gonna go for. Maybe, just ironically, they're gonna give you one buck for it or something, maybe 500, but for some reason I'm not expecting it to be worth that much. And yeah, by the way, I know that Mew can learn Soft Boiled as well, but it's only by virtue of it being able to learn every TM in the game. If there wasn't any Soft Boiled TM at all, there would be no problem at all. So after that little trip to the Pokemon Center, now it's time to go fight that one trainer on Route 4. It's been a while since I've uh, last been there. It was like 50 videos ago, I think? Speaking of uh, videos... Oh, by the way, I really hate that zigzag. At least, you know, in Fire Red and Leaf Green, it's three, three tiles wide, the bridge. So you can just go straight in the middle without having to zigzag your way through. And yeah, speaking of... Um, of videos, this is actually my 100th video. Never thought I'd make it that far, but here I am. And by the way, I'm not going to make a special video to commemorate the event like some people do, because I simply don't consider myself qualified to, to, to judge of what are my best hits, so to speak. A little tease of Cerulean Cave now, and, you know, just to come back on what I was saying in the last video about um, the, the glitch weather, well, as I said, Shadi is under no obligation to emulate Wi-Fi perfectly, but the thing is that it already doesn't! That there's sleeve claws, Ubers, all that kind of thing that's not on the cartridges themselves. Well, the, some of them are in Battle Revolution, but Battle Revolution has uh, some other quirks that aren't emulated on Shoddy. So, yeah, it's already an imperfect copy, though, ironically, every single thing that's on Shoddy that's not in the cartridges, well, it's for the better. And that glitch would fall under that category. And from what I've heard, a side effect of that glitch is that it might actually reveal uh, the opponent's ability to you. So, let's say, for example, your opponent tries a heatproof bronze on for novelty in order to try and trick you. Well, if that glitch happens, well, I don't know the specifics, but it might actually give away the ability, thus completely spoiling the element of surprise, and that is most definitely not cool. This has no business on a simulator. It's much too game-breaking, so there's no, it has no business being there, even if that glitch isn't a bootleg one, and it remains in the US version. Don't change anything, it's just fine the way it is. And now I'm going to buy some Ultra Balls and Hyper Potions to prepare myself for the battle against Zapdos. But the thing is, I've got to go through two different cities to buy those two items, because one has the, the Ultra Balls and the other has Hyper Potions. There's only Cinnabar Island and probably the Indigo Plateau as well that has both. But first I'm going to sell that Nugget that I didn't sell earlier. Hey! Payday's worth 2,500! I thought it was gonna be worth like 500 or something since that was what the the water gun TM was worth, but actually they, they had the common sense to give the, the Payday TM a decent monetary value. That's cool. Okay. Oh, damn. You mean I... I thought I was able to press, uh, you know, right and left in order to go up and down by 10, but nope, doesn't seem to work, and to top it all off, I'm... looks like I'm forced to mash the up button because just keeping, keeping it down doesn't do anything. 
Now, one last note about the glitch is that one another reason why it shouldn't be implemented is that people might actually start using Pursuit for the purpose of triggering the glitch if they think it could give them an advantage. And, of course, I would not like to be the guy who's on the receiving end of such a cheap shot and I think neither do you so yeah if you think this is a good idea you should really think that again but okay that's enough glitch talk I'm sick of talking about it you're sick of listening to me ranting on about it so just to change the subject completely uh just a little thought about the Super Bowl will somebody please Give those poor Arizona cheerleaders a cheeseburger or something? I've seen all-you-can-eat buffets with less ribs than that! Okay, finally, after all that preparation, time to head to the power plant. And one thing that annoys me is that in Fire Red and Leaf Green, you can actually fly to the Pokemon Centers at the entrance of Mount Moon and the Rock Tunnel. And But here, you don't have that option, so I'm forced to fly to Cerulean instead. Not that the ride from Cerulean to the Rock Tunnel entrance is that harsh of a ride, especially with all the trainers beaten, but it's still a mild annoyance to have to go through Route 9 again, especially since it's constructed as sort of a little maze. But, whatever. One thing that's interesting about the, the power plant is that in red and blue, the wild Pokémon's levels are much, much lower than in yellow. In yellow, they're in the 30s for every Pokémon, whereas um, in in red and blue, they're in the 20s for the likes of Magnemite, Pikachu, and Voltorb, while, uh, while only Magneton and Raichu are in the 30s, so that's gonna be helpful from the point of view that um, I'm going to have probably more PP and more HP in order to take on Zapdos, which is always a good thing since I'm expecting to I'm expecting it to be tough to capture. Remember, one thing about legendaries is that you really you really got to get them deep in the red. With most Pokémon that's just fine, but with legendaries and Beldum oddly and you really, really have to get them deep in the red and preferably asleep in order to be able to catch them with... I wouldn't say with ease, but it, it will be a lot less complicated than if you keep your HP like halfway or at a quarter. By the way, I didn't remember there being a trainer there, so yeah, goes to show what I know. By the way, where are, where are Rhyhorn's hind legs? Doesn't look like a kid's got any. But, yeah, back to Zapdos, well, one thing to remember is that while everything I have can take Thunder Shock like a man, nobody's gonna like taking a Drill Peck in the face. Venusaur because it's weak to it, and Alakazam and Gengar because they don't have that much HP, and their defense is even worse. So, yeah, it's gonna be all about, you know, trying to avoid those drill pecks by making it sleep as long as possible while I'm willing down its health and trying to catch it. Now just a question, if this guy has more rare Pokemon at home, then why doesn't he bring them with him? It might actually give him a better chance of winning. Not that he actually stands a chance of winning against my super strong team, but still, that's really stupid. And just as I enter the power plant, I'm greeted by a Magneton. Yeah, nice welcome committee. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to kill it in one shot, which should be doable. Oh no, it, it, it's got like one HP left. If I can do this for Zabdos, I might actually be fine. But yeah, I can be thankful that the Steel type hasn't been invented yet, else I would have had a bit more trouble taking it down. And I was about to express my worry that all of my attacks were too strong and might kill Zabdos too quickly, but after failing to take down a Magneton, well, I can't say I'm that worried anymore. Now this Magnemite here should be a piece of cake, especially since, as I said, the levels aren't nearly as high as they are in yellow. So I'm gonna stop there for now, and next time, it's the path to Zabdos!